Hey guys, Doug Walker here. If you read the title above, these are the top 20 of my favorite TV shows. I know I'm pretentious, I couldn't keep it at just top 10. I, TV was a big part of growing up for me, it was a big part for a lot of us, uh, sadly. But um, So I'm going to talk about the top 20, and something to keep in mind, these are not like the most influential or the most inspiring TV shows, because that's a different list, although a lot of them are on here. Um, these are the ones I just love watching. I can just watch over and over and over, never get tired of them. They just really, really fill me up. So, uh, try to guess number one, because my guess is that you're not going to be able to get it, because it's something I don't talk about it. I don't think I've ever talked about it in a, a, another video or show. Um, and, yeah, don't cheat by looking at the comments below either. J just see if you can get it. I'm betting that you're not going to be able to get it. Uh, so, anyway, why... Waste any more time, let's go with the top 20 of my favorite TV shows. Faulty Towers. Now even though there's just 12 episodes of this show, guy, that's probably a long-running series in Britain, this is such a hilarious show. It's all farce, most of it's farce. Um, and I love farce. I love it when it's well put together, and this show really does do it brilliantly. Uh, the speed, the pace, the uh, um, the kind of jokes they tell. The character of Basil Fawlty is so funny, and uh, and Manuel and uh, and his wife. I mean, it, just the way they also work off each other is, you know, so enjoyable. And just seeing the absolute insanity, and most of it coming from him, the main character, who's such this brilliant jerk. I mean, just one of the great jerks. I don't know why, but Britain turns out these spectacular jerks. Uh, and Basil Fawlty is just a great one, and it's one of those shows where if you see it, you can see why people love it. They always start off slow. That's the one thing. There is comedy in the first half, but it's usually very slow, and a lot of it's just set up. That's my one problem with the show, is that the setups could have been funnier. Uh, but then again, maybe we wouldn't have paid as much attention to the setups if we are constantly laughing at the jokes. But that's like my one complaint about it. But whenever you get to the second half of the show, it's, it's some of the funniest stuff you'll ever see. So you can see why it's number 20. Seinfeld. Okay, sort of a no-brainer for everybody. I mean, a lot of people have this on their list. I actually, I used to hate this show because I used to not like him. I used to not like Seinfeld himself. I didn't think he was that hot an actor. Uh, but his delivery sort of grew on me. It's sort of that same Mike Nelson delivery where you're always sort of aware that he's acting. He's aware of it too, but he's not... He's letting you have fun with it because he's having fun with it as well. So I, I've grown to like it. Uh, and I've also grown to like the premise as well, because I always thought, well, th this needed a better punchline, this needed a better ending, this needed a better blah blah blah, and when I realized that it was about little things that don't matter that much in life, uh, it was very different, you know, and I enjoyed it a lot more. Uh, something that I have a huge issue with, I love this show, but I have a huge issue with, is I don't think this show is about nothing. I think that's very important to get down, because even Seinfeld at the beginning was saying, let's come up with a show with how a comedian gets his material. And then they change it to, it's a show about nothing, because that's just easier to say. It's not about nothing. It's about little things. Okay, there is a huge difference. You know, I, what drives me nuts, again, I like the show, I love the show, but what drives me nuts is the episode where they try to pitch and they say, we'll be geniuses, a show about nothing, they're saying a thing, we were gonna get away with a show about nothing, and he was explaining to the, to the producer, what'd you do, you got up this morning, you went to work, he's like, that's an episode! When have you ever seen an episode like that? No. There is always a setup, there is always a problem, they always have to overcome it, and by the end, there is usually a resolution. A funny one, but a resolution. That's not nothing. That is something. It's just about something that's not very important, but it is something. There is always a story. There's always a plot. But as those stories and plots go, they're hilarious, and they're so funny, and I love how selfish these characters are. And what I really like about this show, have you ever noticed, There's you've never heard on a commercial on a very special episode of Seinfeld. They never did that. They never had that dramatic moment or that dramatic episode. If any drama ever came out of it, it was through the comedy of the characters, and it was sort of, I don't want to say by accident, but it was very natural. Um, so, I really love that show. I think it's great, and I understand why some people say they can't like it because those are such selfish, horrible characters. That's why I like it. <laughs> you know, and if you don't like it, I totally understand that because they are selfish and horrible, but uh, it really cracks me up. <music> 
Louie. Okay, now when I was saying before that Seinfeld wasn't a show about nothing, this is the show about nothing. If you watch this show, literally, what happens in an episode? The guy, he goes, he does his stand-up, he might go on a date, visits his daughters, goes, chats with a friend, that's an episode. Literally, that's it. And it's just about the people he comes across, the weird things that happen, the, you know, again, tiny little things like Seinfeld. It is very similar to Seinfeld. I mean, right down to the guys that stand up. And he talks about little things that don't matter. Uh, but this is the show about nothing. This is actually a show I've been waiting for for a long time. And it's still on, and it's still going. And it's very, very funny. Actually, all honesty, Seinfeld is probably funnier, but I really respect Louis for what it's doing because this is a show I've always wanted to see happen, a show that really did have no plot, no resolution, no beginning, middle, and end. It's just a person's day, uh, but with funny things happening. You know, they don't cleverly come back at the end or anything. It's just, here's some funny shit. And I've always waited for a show to do that because I don't think we always have to be bound to this beginning, middle, and end, this three-act structure, which is... Great, as worked for a long time, but, you know, I like these people that actually try to get away from it and try something new. And I think it is so funny, and this guy is so funny, and the, the shock humor is sort of hit or miss, but uh, you never know what's going to happen on there. It's just a pure, out-of-nowhere episode. I think my favorite bit is when there's a scene where he's on a plane, and it looks like the plane's going to crash, and they're just screaming and yelling and everything's shaking. You cut to the next scene, they get off the plane. Just fine. It's... You never know what happened. You never know if it got better, how it got better, what the problem is. I mean, it's just pure mindfuck. I mean, it just totally goes against how to tell a regular story, and I love this show for that. It is so different that way, and uh, it's still on. It's on FX. Check it out. It's a great show. Number 17. The Twilight Zone. Yeah, wow, something that's not a comedy, imagine. As you can see, I like a lot of comedies, but, uh... When has there ever been a show like this this good? People have tried to do it again and again, you know, this kind of show, but it's never been topped, it's never been this creative, it's never been this clever, and chances are it never will. I don't think people should try to top this. I think they got it perfect the first time. Not to say every episode is good, but, you know, most of them are such gems, and they're... And they're different kind of twists. It's not like every one of them has to have a twist. There's just something very different, very, you know, out of this world. And they're just so enjoyable. And they're so dark. And they're so gothic. And they're so timeless. And they're such these classic stories. And the only thing that really ties them together is that narrator in the beginning and the opening. And I... And just the fact that you're almost always going to get a dark story. And of course, I mean, I'm one of the people, for whatever reason, you know, I like the dark stuff. A lot of people like the dark stuff. We like twists. Um, and they're just so enjoyable. Even the bad ones, there's always something to enjoy about them. They are, they're just timeless. They're absolutely perfect. Monty Python's Flying Circus. Now, what's interesting about this show is that I don't think all of it's funny. I think there's a lot of sketches that do sort of die. Actually, Family Guy put it very interestingly when they were saying, you know, he was torturing Meg by showing her all the Monty Python sketches that aren't really funny. They're just sort of odd and filler. And he spliced them all together and he's showing them to her. You know, it, that's actually sort of a good way of, of explaining it. But... With that said, I think that stuff is still needed and still has to be there because Python is just sort of this weird, surreal stream of consciousness. You know, you have these sketches, and some are like almost like SNL sketches. Some are like an SNL sketch, but, you know, just a little surreal or a little odd. You know, uh, others are just pure insanity. You know, they make no sense. You know, like with the spam sketch. Why, why are there Vikings in that restaurant? No reason. None at all. Uh, you know, the animations, good God, those are beautifully nonsensical. Uh, and that's how the show worked. And sometimes it, it would be really funny, sometimes it would be kind of boring, sometimes it would be, you know, okay, and other times it would be a laugh riot. And they just went out and they just did it, and they threw everything at you. And even when the show, uh, even when some of the jokes didn't work, there was still this strange respect for it, that it was trying it anyway, and that it... Because of that, you, you never, it was unpredictable. You never knew what you were going to get because you know they try anything. They didn't care. And there's this really great feeling going into a show saying, 
I have no idea what they're going to do. I don't know where this is going to go at all. I don't know what's going to appear. And it's that unpredictability that made Python so great and made that show so great and how it all sort of connected to the sketches and they all sort of linked together, you know, like with the cartoons uh, and how they'd have to really prepare. They had to put a lot of effort into planning all these things so that they sort of mold together and that means they're putting a lot of preparation, a lot of time in a joke that they really have no idea if it's going to work at all. But they're throwing so much at it. I think you can sense that from Python. There's so much passion and so much just, you know, forgetting the rules and just throwing whatever the hell they want. And it really comes through. And a lot of times you get stuff that's really funny. Classic sketches that all of you quote, I'm sure. And... What else can you say? It's Monty Python. Fox's Peter Pan and the Pirates. Now I know that's a really weird choice, but it's one of those things where watching it again, okay, this is like if Miyazaki did a TV show. That's what I feel watching this show. This is so creative. This is so smart. This is so timeless. There's no pop cultural references at all. There's no words that'll be dated. You know, it captures the essence of the story, the original Peter Pan story, and adds so much more to it. I mean, I think this is actually so much better than the original Peter Pan story. I mean, these characters seem real. Uh, you know, the Peter Pan character is just so mischievous and so kind of crazy, but he's also very likable, you know, and, uh, and Hook, Tim Curry as Hook, good God! I mean, you know, I, I talked about how great Dustin Hoffman was as Hook. I, Curry might be better. I mean, he is just one of the great Captain Hooks. And what I like about it, too, is that it is doing its own thing. It's doing its own sort of unique uh, look on the fairy tale. It, it's not, or story, I don't know, technically it's a fairy tale, but um, it just has its own unique look. Peter Pan doesn't wear all green. Captain Hook doesn't have the mustache and stuff. I mean, they're, they're giving its own look. And even the story that they're just there for however long. <laughs> I mean, it seems like they're there forever. Uh, but what they do with it is so, is so clever. Like, there's one, uh, there's one episode where Peter leaves for too long, you know, 